Hello and welcome back to my studio. In this film I'm going to do a pencil drawing, a portrait. Now some of you who've watched me on social media over the years will have seen that occasionally I post up some little drawing sketches of characters who I meet either locally or over in the lakes and I enjoy doing those. I don't do them often enough but today I wanted to do one character in particular. Now this drawing will be based on this preliminary sketch which I did just the other night and some of you may recognize him hopefully you'll recognize him and it's Alfred Wainwright the famous guidebook writer in the Lake District. This preliminary sketch is only six inches square and it's a very rough idea of the way I want the final work to come out. It's based on several references from videos and photographs and not one single picture it's not a copy of a single picture. Wainwright looking off into the distance with his pipe and his car coat and just a, a picture which people would say that's Wainwright. And I'm going to do this as a full more detailed drawing. And that's what this film is going to be about. So keep watching. So let's get started on the drawing itself. For this, I'm going to use um, some different pieces of equipment, which I'll show you now. I'm going to do the drawing on this pad of paper. It's Canson 1557, it's called, and it's basically a heavyweight cartridge paper. It's got a little bit of tooth on it, which means it's got a little bit of texture, which means that the pencil marks won't be perfectly smooth. They'll have a little bit of roughness to them, which I think will work quite well in a picture of someone like Wainwright, who has a lot of character and roughness in his face. He didn't have the perfect complexion. So that's the paper we're going to use. Now, for the drawing equipment, uh, I'm going to use just some standard pencils. These are normal drawing pencils. You can see there are a couple of different makes, and they range from 2B, 4B, to 7B. Now, 2B is quite soft, it gives quite a nice dark line, but 7B is really quite rich and dark, and these will give tonal values in the drawing. I'll explain it more as I'm doing the drawing. Now, I'll just explain that I am going to use the overhead camera, and I'll film it in time-lapse. It'll just be too long if I film it in real time. But as the time-lapse is going through, I'll explain some of the techniques which I'm using to produce this final drawing. So let's get started. That's the initial stage of the portrait done. And by using a 2B pencil, I've been able to identify the shapes of the portrait and I haven't made too heavy a mark on the paper. So if I need to make any adjustments, I can. And it's a good time to stand back and have a look and see how the portrait's developing before getting too involved in it. One of the things I'm not happy with is the shape of the pipe. Compared to the initial sketch which I did here I tried to bring the pipe over to more of the left hand side of the the sitter's face uh, to give it a bit more three-dimensional look but it just doesn't seem to sit right 
from looking at an awful lot of reference photographs of Wainwright himself, he always had his pipe in his left-hand side of his mouth. And the photographs of him sitting, the pipe hangs down a lot. It doesn't sit out straight, it hangs down a lot. You obviously hold it quite loosely in his, in his mouth. And in the version that I've just drawn, it seems to sit up too much and it's a little bit to one side, it's a bit skew whiff. The photographs generally show him with the pipe almost straight down in front of his mouth, but just with a little bit of an angle to the left. So I'm going to adjust that. Because I've just used a 2B pencil, it'll be quite easy to erase the pipe that I've done and redraw it so it's more in a, an acceptable position. It just doesn't look right at the minute. I want it to get more like the original sketch. So that's what I'm going to do now. Slight adjustment to that, and then I can work on developing the tonal values of the whole drawing. Now that I've got a lot of the drawing done on the portrait, what I want to do is blend some of those pencil marks. They look a little bit textured at the minute, a little bit rough. So to do that, I'm going to do some blending using these items. And they look very similar, but they're two different types of blending tools. The first two I've got here are, I'll just put that down. I've got two blending stumps. Basically they're compressed paper and they're pointed at both ends and they come in different sizes and thicknesses. And they're generally used for blending areas of graphite or charcoal, graphite in this case, and to give a much smoother effect than what you'll get with a pencil. They're quite good. They've got a point at, at uh, the uh, one end that you can squash down a bit to flatten out and to get a little bit of um, detailed area. And of course, the smaller one will give you a little bit more finer. The bigger one, you can actually do really quite broad strokes of graphite or charcoal on your drawing. The other small tool is what's called a tortillon. Now that's basically a strip of paper that's been rolled up and it's got a conical point at one end, just one end on this one, and you can see that it's ridged. Uh, you can't quite see it on here, I wouldn't think, but it's ridged that goes to a point. This is used in a similar manner to a blending stump, except it's used at more of a point to go into the detail where you want to blend a much neater or smaller area of uh, detail. So I'll get on and use those and blend some of the areas that I want to, and I can go over it again. The idea is not to press too hard and just gently blend away. If you blend too hard, it'll press the graphite onto the paper and it'll be hard to erase if you need to. So I'll get on and do that.
that's some of the blending completed and as you can see by blending in uh, the, the the graphite the whole look of the picture has turned um, the skin of the portrait a, a, a middle value of grey and that's fine because it's going to be um, really highlighted when I put the background in but what I have to do now is I go on and I'm going to lift some of the highlights out and to do this it's very uh, simple a case of just using some erasers and I've got a, ver a variety of erasers here um, a sort of kneaded putty eraser which is really good for sort of broad areas and then uh, that's malleable so you can uh, make it into different shapes and take out um, broad spaces as well as some finer detail. I've also got one of these, um, I think they're called uh, plastic rubbers, but uh, they're harder, a harder rubber than that um, uh, putty rubber. And if you cut slices off like I've done here, you'll see that you can get a little block where it's got quite a nice sharp edge. That's also very good, as long as you don't rub too hard for taking out broader areas, but also with that sharp edge, you can take out straight lines very neatly, but it works best if you're doing a straight line edge. And th these other two are basically a razor pens, um, one's thicker than the other, and they're, they're very like a normal sort of like a felt tip pen, but instead of having ink in the middle, it's got an eraser. And this smaller one, which is a Tombow, is really good for getting fine details and lifting out fine details like hairs and things like that, whereas this one will cover a wider area. So I'm going to lift out some of the highlights and we'll see where we go from there. I like the way this is coming along. I'm very pleased with it. The blendings work very well. And then I've lifted out some of the highlights to give it a bit more depth to the whole uh, image. But compared to the white background, the uh, grayness of, of the face itself looks a little bit dark at the minute. But what I intend to do next is put the background in. And I'm gonna make that a really dark gray. And that'll lift the whole portrait. And the bonus to that is that Wainwright having uh, basically white hair, so I need that contrast. And that contrast will come from the, the gray of the background and the white of his hair. And that should lift the whole of his face right out. And that's the stage I'm on with now.
Well, I think that's about it. It's quite easy to carry on and just fiddle and, and overwork the picture, but I'm really pleased the way that's come out. The effect is realistic without being uh, the hyper-realism that you see in some pencil drawings. I still want it to look like a drawing and not a photograph. And I think that's brought out the character of Wainwright quite well. I like the, 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 the look he has on his face where he's looking off into the distance, he's not looking directly at you. He's got the pipe, his wavy hair and his car coat that he always seemed to wear. And I think that really sums up uh, Wainwright quite well. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go up to the workshop, I'll make a frame, and then I'll come back and I'll show you the picture when it's all done and in its frame. Well, I've been up to the workshop and I've put a frame around the drawing. I've kept it a very simple black frame with a double mount, and this is it. This is the drawing in its frame, ready to hang on the wall and I'm really pleased with it. Now, I don't usually do drawings like this, but I intend to do some more drawings uh, in the future, uh, graphite drawings, not of portraits as such, but of different subjects. So if you've enjoyed watching this film, do give me a like, that's uh, dead simple to do. Just click the like button. And even better, if you want to see what I'm doing in the future, whether it's my artwork or my fell walking and things like that, then why not click the subscribe button? It's much appreciated. And I thank you for watching. See you next time.